When Adam and Eve partook of the fruit in the book of Genesis, what did God say? He said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, knowing good from evil. So what this is, is man stepping out of oneness, stepping out of, you know, the realm of non-duality, and he's coming into the realm of duality. He's becoming self-conscious. He's He's becoming self-aware. His ego has come into existence once he partook of that fruit, which symbolized, you know, knowledge. It symbolized good and evil. What that is a representation of is the polarities. The polarities that the Hermetic philosophy talks about, you know? And it's all basically duality expressed in degrees you have extremes but then you also have in between those extremes of of uh you know black and white you have a lot of different shades of color in between right so black is never completely separate from white and white is never separate from black you know, and it's the same thing with good and evil. You know, these these polarities, this duality is never separate. It's all connected. It's all one. There's only varying degrees in between those two polarities. So to partake of the fruit of good and evil is to become as God, knowing good from evil. And in that same verse, it talks about partaking of the tree of life. You see, there was a tree of life and there was a tree of good and evil, a tree of knowledge and a tree of life. The tree of life is the ability to, to be able to retain your true essence and to be able to know your true essence, you know, to be able to know that... Uh, you know, that duality, that good and evil is not really who you are. You know, it's just, it's a part of the realm, the physical realm, which you live in, which you have come into. You see, Paul claims that he has his secret knowledge, right? This gnosis. And basically what he's saying is that, hey, it's not literal, you know? So you you start to get away from the literalism in the Old Testament, believe it or not, because the Jewish perspective was that, you know, it was all going to be literal, you know, that Christ would return and all these things would happen. But those things never happened when the New Testament Jesus returns. So now they have to say, well, OK, well, these things are going to happen the next time Jesus comes. But that's not at all the original concept of how it was supposed to happen according to the Old Testament. A lot of things were added on in the New Testament that don't coincide with the Old Testament language and, and talking of a coming Messiah. But so if we don't learn to read the scriptures allegorically, if we aren't able to separate the fact from the fiction or the allegory, then we're going to end up being confused we're going to end up, you know, doubting the reliability of the scriptures as a whole. And a lot of times people just say, you know, it's all BS and they throw it all out. A good example of this is, you know, in Genesis as well, where, you know, in the beginning, the word was God. The word was with God. So God spoke everything into existence through vibration. But first... It had to come through the mind of God, right? And if you know Hermetic philosophy, you know that the universe is mental. It's the mind of God. And everything that exists in the universe, which is God's mind, is his thought, right? He has thought everything into existence just like we do. We think everything into existence. So we are in the image of God. We are the same way. We function the same way. So in the beginning, you know, the, the world and the universe was manifested through through uh, thought and, and spoke out into vibration because, you know, um, thoughts are basically, you know, electric chemical discharge, you know. So because 
your thoughts are a more finite, infinite, finite type of vibration. But once it starts to manifest itself through the vibration of the vocal cords, you start to interact um, with more density, right? You start to, um, those thoughts become more dense. They start to vibrate at a higher frequency. They start to become more dense. They start to materialize. It's almost like a crystallization process coming out, right? From the essence. It just comes out from the essence, which is God. And so it's the same thing as when, you know, Jesus was being condemned for not washing his hands before he ate. And he was like, nah, he's like, it's not about what goes into the mouth. It's what comes out of the mouth. You know, what are you manifesting in your life, you know? And so you have people that will even go as far as trying to live these, um, you know, these programs, these religious programs where they want you to fast. They want you to, um, you know, not take certain things into your body. But, you know, it's not what goes into the body. It's what you manifest. It's what comes out of out of the mouth you know what i'm saying and the mouth is symbolic of you what you do what you produce you know what you think you know how you create how you utilize your mind and then you got people that will try to tell you that you know you're not living right you know you're doing this wrong you're doing that wrong but you know what they don't understand is that that's why they're lost and they're ignorant you know and and no matter what kind of lifestyle they live, they're just going to still, you know, have the same perspective and concept of the world. They're, they're never going to advance because they're stuck in what they do in the, in the, in regards to uh, living this way as opposed to that way, eating this as not opposed to eating that. You see, they're living in the realm of duality. Um, and so, duality is separation from oneness you know so here they are they're trying to reach spirituality by practicing duality and it just don't work like that you got to change your perspective and not look at things through the dualistic lens and you know uh while we do live in the physical realm made from duality and yeah it is true that you can have an unhealthy lifestyle and kill yourself but once again how are you looking at that you know are you looking at life through a, du a dualistic lens where you say oh i'm going to live or i'm going to die because that's still duality you know you you say oh if i don't eat right i'm going to die well if you don't die, you live. Those are two opposites, right? So you're living in duality, thinking you're going to save yourself from another part of duality, you know, when in reality, everything is one. Everything exists through, uh, you know, vibration. Everything exists through the oneness, the essence, which is God. Now, there is a reason that you might want to eat clean food and and fast spiritually. And that reason would be to keep your mind as, as clear and as, um, as functioning as, as best it can, right? Because, you know, your mind is your connection to God. So your perspective has to be, be, be clear, right? You have to be able to think clearly. So, you know, the chemicals that we take into our body, obviously, you know, they, they have an effect on our, our perception as well. They can cloud that perception. So, you know, that's up to the individual, you know, if they feel like that's something that they need to get a better grasp on their Christ consciousness, their awareness, you know, um, to each their own. The last thing we want to do is judge people who are, you know, taking those paths you know, because when you get into judgment, you get into duality once again. So don't look at people through the, the lens of, of judgment because that's the lens of duality. You know, so I mean, really the important thing is, is your perspective. If you want to receive more light, if you want to come into more light, you know, I mean, isn't that what it's all about, right? We're all trying to receive more light. 
And if we really want to do that, we have to, you know, be more concerned with our perspective on things than anything else, you know, that would have to do with, you know, physical exercise, you know, dietary subject matter, you know, that sort of stuff is, is all good if that's what you're interested in. But we have to put our perspective first. You know, if your diet is messing with your clarity, then change it, you know. But if not, then so be it. You know, you use your your perspective is your superpower. That's all there is to it. It's all about changing your perspective in the way that you look at the world. Plain and simple. There is no, you know magic thing that you can do or that you you need to do it's simply a that's what enlightenment is about it's about your perspective it's the way you look at the world it's the way you see everything around you you know um so the idea is to understand that you are not you are not your mind you are not this realm of duality you're not this uh uh this this obsessive constant thinking that's going on inside of your head. Those thoughts, they come and go, right? Materialism, it all comes and goes. But what stays is your uh, your consciousness, your awareness, you know? That's what stays. That's the anchor. That's what you always come back to. Because if you get lost in this realm of duality, well, then you're going to be, you know, you're going to be out there on, on the sea getting tossed to and fro, you know? You're, you're going to be like, trying to walk walk out on the water and it's you know you want to you're going to start losing faith and you're going to start sinking because you know you're looking at this world through duality so it's all about perspective if you want to be enlightened you got to change your perspective plain and simple once again you know what when it comes to your perspective it comes to knowing who you really are what you really are and that you're not these things that you think about you're not the things that you own you're not this this physical body, um, you know, your pure awareness, you're just observing things, you know, and, and, and the objective is to live your life in reality because reality is nature and, you know, God expresses himself through nature and through reality. So if you want to know God, you got to ground yourself in reality and nature. And that means to get outside of here, you know, stop getting stuck in here. And, and, and letting everything that goes on inside of the mind, you know, basically control your perspective and, and your existence. You have to learn to live your life in the, in the present moment, to live in the now, as they would say, you know, to practice that awareness and to learn that, you know, when thoughts come and go, you know, don't get fixated on them. Don't get stuck in, don't let them get stuck in your head. Don't let them build that uh, negative energy up in your body, you know. Uh, so your thoughts, they do create your existence, whether you want to uh, experience heaven on earth or hell on earth. It's going to depend on the thoughts that you allow to uh, fester in your mind, allow to uh, take up residence in your mind. It's about taking control of that and deciding, you know, what kind of thoughts am I going to nurture, you know? And so those things create the energy that is inside of you. And, you know, what's inside of you is your universe, it's your world. So, you know, and that's what enlightenment is about. It's about taking the, taking the will back, you know? It's about manning the helm, you know, and steering your own ship instead of being tossed to and fro by the world of duality. Uh, because, you know, you look at things as good or bad and you start to suffer. You know, Buddha said that the root of all suffering is wanting reality to be something that it's not, you know, and, and that's just a fact. You know, the minute that you start resisting the present moment because your mind is telling you that there's something better, you know, you're imagining in your mind that there's something better in the future instead of living in the present moment, embracing the present moment, getting into reality, you know, because reality is simply what is. And you observe reality through your awareness. Your awareness 
is like this superpower, right? It's your essence, it's your consciousness, right? So you experience all of these things through your senses. You touch, see, taste, smell, hear these things, right? All these things ground you in reality.